Welcome to the online training on antimicrobial resistance. This training has been designed for the members of the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association by the Ecumenical Pharmaceutical Network. Please watch this training file carefully. There will be a short assessment at the bi-monthly meeting on the 21st of November 2015. Note that this training will earn you three CPD points upon passing the assessment. During this training, we will discuss the background and history of AMR. We will describe the mechanisms and factors that drive antimicrobial resistance. We will discuss the cross-cutting problem of AMR and describe how we can address AMR in the pharmacy setting. What is antimicrobial resistance? AMR can be defined as the ability of microbes to grow in the presence of a chemical, either a drug or a medicine, that would normally kill them or limit their growth. AMR makes it harder to eliminate infections from the body because the existing medicines become less effective. AMR is a public health concern. This has been shown by the emergence of a multi-drug resistant TB, multi-drug resistant malaria, and drug resistant HIV and AIDS. And the threat of antimicrobial resistance is not just focused on bacterial infections, but we can see the, um, the viral infections, parasitic infections, are also implicated in this. Apart from uh, resistance emerging to viral, parasitic, and bacterial infections, we also have uh, enterobacteriaceae that produce enzymes that can destroy or reduce the effectiveness of antimicrobial agents. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin while working with Staphylococcus bacteria. He noticed that a type of mold growing by accident on a laboratory plate was protected from and even repelled the bacteria. This active substance, which Fleming called penicillin, was literally an antibiotic. In 1941, human studies on penicillin began, and the production efforts grew to the point where adequate supplies became available by 1944 and Fleming received his Nobel Prize for his work on antibiotics in 1945. And by the end of the World War II, penicillin had become widely available and had won worldwide acceptance. Two years after he received his Nobel Prize, physicians observed the first case of antimicrobial resistance to penicillin. Six years after the human studies began. And the prevalence of resistance varied between geographical regions and over time. Fleming, in his Nobel Prize lecture, himself had warned of the danger of resistance. And he said that it was not difficult to make microbes resistant to penicillin. All it needed was exposing them to concentrations that were not sufficient to kill them and this same thing has occasionally happened in the body. And by exposing these microbes to non-lethal quantities of the drug, eventually makes them resistant. This is a chart showing when an antibiotic was discovered and when the first cases of resistance occurred. Tetracycline was first introduced into the market in 1950. And by 1950, 59, resistance to tetracycline had already been reported. Erythromycin was introduced in 1953, and by 1968, strains that were resistant to eryth erythromycin had been reported. For gentamicin, the first time it was introduced into the market was 1963, and in 1979, resistance strains to gentamicin had already been reported. It's easy to see that the occurrence of new resistance 
has been increasing over the last years. And it takes a shorter time between the time a drug is introduced into the market for use and the time that resistance is reported. There are several reported cases of drug-resistant TB across different regions globally, and the trend has increased over the last 10 years. Looking at the time period between 2005 to 2012, we can see that the trends of the emergence of drug-resistant TB has increased. One could argue that we only need to develop new antibiotics to combat the emergence of resistance. But what data is showing us is that this is getting harder and harder over time. The antibiotic pipeline is dry. There is a dramatic decrease in antibiotic drug approvals. Looking at the chart from 1983 to 87, we had about 16 new antibiotics being approved in comparison to less than two anti anti antibiotics being approved over a period of four years between 2008 and 2012. AMR is a steadily increasing global public health threat. Infectious diseases kill approximately 10 million people annually and 95% of these live in, in resource constrained countries. Antimicrobial resistance is widespread both in the hospital and other community settings. And this is a challenge because major life-saving interventions for infectious diseases is actually pegged on antimicrobial treatment, which should be effective. And this is further aggravated by the shrinking range of avail available antimicrobial drugs in the market. Antimicrobial resistance is rapidly making many first-line treatments ineffective, and in some cases, the second and third-line treatments are also becoming ineffective. And as a result, there's a negative impact in the management and treatment of infectious diseases, including HIV, TB, and malaria. Looking at the global burden of infectious diseases, 15 million infectious disease deaths occurred in 2002, and this is according to the WHO report for 2003. And all the top five diseases that caused death were infectious diseases, and most of these can be treated with antimicrobials. And in regard to antimicrobial resistance, if these trends increase, then the number of deaths due to infectious diseases are likely to rise. There are global reports of increase of resistance to various antimicrobial agents. Some examples from Kenya and data indicate that there is an increased trend of resistance to commonly used antimicrobial agents that are also affordable. Taking an example of amoxicillin, one of the most widely used antimicrobial agents in Kenya, which had recorded minimal resistance in 1996, almost at 0%, but by the year 2002, resistance had risen to levels of 65%. Other studies have been carried out in food handlers in Nairobi hotels that have indicated pathogenic E. coli detected among 4% of those that were sampled, and the majority of those that were sampled had strains that were resistant to tetracycline. And 40% of these sampled food handlers had multi-drug resistant strains. Why are we concerned about the food handlers? We are concerned because of the courage of multi-drug resistant toxins by this population. And this is a public health concern because trans transmission can occur from this seemingly safe um, uh, population to other people and this can further aggravate the spread of 
antimicrobial resistance. Looking at studies that have been done for trimethoprin sulfamethoxazole resistance on patients who have been put on daily prophylactic therapy, especially those that are taking antiretroviral agents, some studies have indicated a baseline prevalence of the presence of um, resistance to cotrimoxazole ranging from 71 to 81%. And for those who take cotrimoxazole daily, the resistance increased significantly from 78 to 98%. So why are we concerned about this? We understand that cotrimoxazole is one of those drugs that forms a backbone in the management of HIV and, and AIDS. And we need to know that daily prophylaxis with cotrimoxazole can actually induce in vivo resistance to the drug after two weeks of administration. Further studies have been carried out on Salmonella typhi isolates from outbreaks in Kenya over a 20-year period and these isolates were studied for antimicrobial resistance. The results indicated that there's been a dramatic increase in the number of multi-drug resistant Salmonella typhi. From the samples 60% of those that were isolated and subjected for antimicrobial susceptibility were found to be multiple drug resistant to commonly used drugs like ampicillin, chloramphenicol, tetracycline, and cotrimoxazole. 22% were resistant to single antibiotic treatments like ampicillin, cotrimoxazole, and tetracycline again. It's important to note that resistant organisms can be transmitted from one region to another because resistant organisms that are identical to Southeast Asia organisms have been identified and this has actually suggested an intercontinental spread of single multidrug resistant clones. Given the emergence of these aggressive MDR organisms, Careful selection and monitoring of antibiotic use, usage will be required in Kenya and potentially other regions in sub-Saharan Africa. From the observations, we can conclude that antimicrobial resistance strains are able to multiply in the presence of drug concentrations that are higher than the concentrations in humans receiving therapeutic doses. It's important for us to note that each introduction of a new antibiotic has been followed within a few years by the first cases of resistance. And it's also critical for us to note that the trend in AMR is steadily increasing in every country in the world and to every antibiotic that has been developed.